five or six seconds. Okay, so welcome back. And so today's session is all about how we can use uh, online online meetings to grow our accounting firms, to, to stand out from others. My goal today is to uh, help you achieve another level, another level of being able to communicate, another level of confidence, another level that you can use this new technology we've all been uh, grappling with for the last 12 months to uh, to. to change the way that we run our firms in a, in a way that gets us better results and helps us to stand out from everybody else. Because I'm sure you've noticed the world has changed quite significantly. Uh, and for me, I've been doing this, this has been my world for quite some time now, but I know for many people, it's, you know, it's, it's starting to get used to talking to a webcam. Having Zoom meetings and stuff is something for many people really started with uh, in 20, early 2020 with COVID, pandemics, lockdowns, uh, and we've had to get used to this. And that means that the way that we communicate is, is changing. And, uh, and generally speaking, the profession, accountants and bookkeepers, aren't necessarily the best people at communicating. They, chat, they start, suffer from it. Uh, so they chat, have challenges. Uh, and I'm going to help you to stand out from your competition. So that's the goal today. But uh, let me, for those of you that, that don't know who I am, uh, my name is, is Mark Wickersham. And I am an accountant. I'm a chartered accountant. I've been in this profession for uh, a long time now. Uh, let me think, it's over 30 years. Uh, I ran my, account, my own accounting firm in, in 1996. Uh, but let me, we're talking about online. We're going to be talking about how to communicate online. And I know many of you know me really well because I know almost all the names of the people uh, that have uh, commented so far in, in the box. Uh, I think the the one person I definitely don't know uh, is Raphael from Portugal down the road. So uh, welcome to you. Uh, uh, so a little bit about my, about my story, because I'm going to teach you today, I'm going to teach you how to be more confident in this online world when you're talking to people via webcams. Uh, and I'm going to talk about the, the then how we can be more confident, about how we can take advantage and go to another level. And... I know sometimes people watch me, whether I'm on a stage at a keynote, not so much now because of lockdown, or whether I'm on a webinar, or on a live, and people think, I can't do what Mark does. I can't do that. I'm, I, I'm introverted. I, I don't like the idea of being on a camera. I, I'm, I'm terrible on a camera. I, I lack this confidence. Well, believe it or not, I wasn't born to be a great communicator. Uh, nobody's born to be that. I'm also, and some of you know who know me, I am a very introverted person. I was the shyest kid at school. Uh, I had a, a real challenge. In fact, in my final year at school, before I went to university, my I did economics was my, my the thing that I I did at degree level, but also at A levels. And my economics teacher in my final report, my school report, he put in that. Mark has an economy with words. <laughs> that was it. Because uh, I'd never used to speak. I was the shyest person in class. I'd never put my hand up and speak. Uh, I had a fear of speaking. I had a fear of being seen. And I managed to get through a big chunk of my life without ever having to speak to people. Unfortunately, that all changed. I nearly got to 30 years without having to speak to people. But all that changed in 1996 because I had to do something that was really, really uncomfortable. And it, it, if you're interested, I'm happy to show you one of my most embarrassing moments. And if you, if you let me know in the comments box if you want to hear or see a really embarrassing moment. The first time, uh, I have some video footage of the very first time that I stood up in front of a, a group of people. And I was petrified. Uh, for, for days leading up to this, I was petrified. And I only had to speak for less than 90 seconds. It was my wedding. And a few, <laughs> Robin Joyce says, yes, wants to know. And Robin, you're cruel. Come on. You don't want to see my most embarrassing moment, do you? Uh, this is the first time I'm going to show you. It's, it's only, it's, I've just cut out a few bits because it's, it's not the best of videos. It was a handheld video. I think it was my father actually did the video. Uh, but it's the first time I ever stood up. God, you're cruel people. You're all saying, yes, yeah, show it, show it, show it, show it. So, okay, this is my most embarrassing moment ever presenting. My first time I presented when uh, it was part of my wedding reception. So hopefully all the technology works. Uh, this is it. Right, so we're going to 
right, this will be a little bit shorter. <laughs> For all those that panic about their sweet steak. Right, first is <laughs> 20 minutes, Mark. 20 minutes? No, it's a bit longer than that. Right, do you want me to hurry up? Right, yeah, oh yeah. Right, first thing I'd like to say is just how lucky I am to have such a wonderful bride. Uh, there's not a great deal I say, I can say tonight, she's looking so stunning. So, I'm lost for words. And secondly, for uh, organising excellent reception. Uh, I hope that there's more to come, which will be excellent. I'd like to thank all the guests for attending and for all the presents. I'd like to thank also my parents for their support and generosity, not just for the last few weeks, but over the last few years that have helped me set up in life. And finally, I'd like to thank the best man for all his support today. Okay, and then finally, I would just like to pose a toast for the bridesmaids. Oh, was that embarrassing? Was that embarrassing? That was the first time I ever spoke uh, in front of a room full of people. It, it was less than 90 seconds. It was, uh, so the person who had my, my sister shout out 20 minutes on the sweepstake, she was well short of that. Uh, it, was an, it was awful. Um, fortunately, fortunately, I didn't have to speak again for another three and a bit years. And I think it was Neil kindly said that was cringy. It was cringy. I wasn't born to present, okay? None of us are. Uh, and I didn't have to do it again for another three and a half years. And then some of you might remember this because I've told this story. Uh, I was running my accounting firm. I ran it in, in fact, I started that same year, 1996. I started my accounting firm. It was a month before that video. And as some of you know, I made a complete mess of my accounting firm in the first few years until I met Steve Pipe. I went on his three-day masterclass and it completely changed my mindset about how you run an accounting firm. And then... And that was in November 1998. In October 1999, Steve messaged me because I'd been sharing the things I'd done as a result of learning from him 11 months earlier. He says, Mark, can you come along and do a guest speaker slot at my uh, masterclass? I have a room full of 40 odd accountants. It's a three day event. Can you come along to day two? And can you have the graveyard slot and do two o'clock till three o'clock? I really did not want to do that. I really did not want to do that because I, my first experience three and a half years earlier, that was really, really embarrassing. But Steve offered to pay me a big sum of money. It was a speaker fee of, at the time, £600 for an hour. And I thought to myself, I need the money. There's no way I can say no. So I went from Sheffield up to Leeds uh, and I hate being late for things. So I want to be there early. I was on from two till three. The lunch break was one. I got there for half past 12. I arrived at half 12 got outside the room, the doors were closed and it had those little, um, those little peephole things so I could peep through and see how, how the presentation was going so I knew when it was wrapping up. Uh, and those of you that know Steve Pipe, Steve Pipe never, never, never runs on time. He always overruns. So it gets to one o'clock and I'm getting increasingly nervous and worried uh, because this is, this is a scary moment. A, a room full of accountants, I can't possibly speak to accountants. What have I got to share that's gonna be of any value? Anyway. About 10 minutes late, later, overrunning, then suddenly he announces the lunch break, doors open, everyone streams out. I'm nervous as hell. I go in. Steve says to me, hi there, Mark. Great to see you. Uh, can I get you a drink? Now, in hindsight, when I look back on that, I think he meant a, you know, some, some water or something. I am that nervous. I say, Steve, yeah, thank you. Can I have a pint of lager? I don't know what I was thinking of. I don't do lunchtime drinking, but I asked, and he looked, he looked, this is weird. He's never had a speaker ask for lager before. Anyway, he goes off the bar. I set my laptop up. 10 minutes later, he comes up, comes across with the lager. I put it on the desk. Then he takes me for lunch. And then at one o'clock, he introduces me. Sorry, two o'clock, he introduces me. Uh, I come to the front. I pick up my, my lager with both hands. And I do my presentation, the entire presentation, clutching and sipping on this pint of lager because I am so flipping nervous at this presentation. Anyway, at the end of it, an hour later, uh, surprisingly, there's a round of applause, which I wasn't expecting. And then Steve announced a, a 10 minute stretch break so he could swap the laptops across. I was expecting to be able to sneak out at that point in time and go home. But while he was doing the stretch break, I had this, all these people came crowding around me asking me questions, which I wasn't expecting. It felt like a celebrity with a paparazzi. I was not expecting that. Afterwards, a few days later, 
Steve, uh, he gets feedback scores off the, ev off the back of every one of his days of presenting. And he sent me the feedback scores and said, Mark, on day two, people said you were the highlight of day two, which I wasn't expecting. He said, Mark, you were so good. I do nine of these a year. Can you be my guest speaker for all nine masterclasses in, 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 in the year 2000? And so I then spoke at all of Steve's events. In 2003, uh, we then went into business together when we, we ran AVN, the network of accountants in the UK together uh, for many years. I then sold my accounting firm to my client managers in 2006 because I realized I actually started to get a real buzz from doing this and helping and working with other accountants. And as you know, that's what I do now. I present to accountants. And what I, here's what I learned. I learned that However good your technical skills are, and, and I was a good accountant. I was a chartered accountant. I had, I specialized in tax. Technically, I was a great accountant, a very technical accountant, good accountant. But I was doing a very average job at running an accounting firm because I realized that there's other skills you need. You cannot build a successful business just on the technical skills. The technical skills will not differentiate you from all the others. There are other skills we have to learn, like how to price, how to lead people. But of all the things I learned, I suddenly realized that the ability to communicate to people, to get a message across, is the number one most powerful skill that you can have. And so I then became obsessed with learning how to communicate. I hired speaker coaches. I started to learn uh, how to then move from speaking on a stage to doing webinars. My first ever webinar was in 2005 when the technology was new. And now my entire world is, is online, which is, enables me to live in Portugal uh, and, and run my business from here. And I love this world that we are now in, uh, where we can communicate to hundreds of people without really having to leave our house. So th that's me, that's what I do. I, I teach the profession uh, how to value price, as you know, but I was not born to be a presenter. I was, I'm an extreme, I'm still an introvert. I still hate, uh, parties and, and get-togethers. Uh, so what I'm going to do in this session, what are we going to do today, today is my agenda is I'm going to share with you some of the things I've learned over the, the last uh, 20 years on how to be more confident and in particular in this new world because we've now in the last 12 months since the pandemic started we've had to change we've had to switch to we now we perhaps you know three four five years ago perhaps you weren't doing zoom calls with your, you were meeting your clients face to face and suddenly we've had to switch to meeting clients meeting prospects using zoom meetings microsoft teams whatever it might well be and it's a very different world and there's a different way to communicate because we can't necessarily see full body language. There's a different way of communicating online. So I'm going to teach you today, firstly, some of the skills, some of the key things you need to do to become more confident, to become more professional, to be better when you are communicating in this online world. And then what we're going to do as well is we're going to start to move. I'm going to take you through four levels today. We're going to look at four levels where we can start with the basic skills and then look at how can we tap into the opportunity? How can we use this opportunity that's been really thrust upon us because of, because of the pandemic, because of the, 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 the fact that we've had to change the way we run our businesses? How can we do it in such a way where we tap into the opportunity? How we uh, stand out from everybody else? And also, one of the things that, if it's okay with you, later on, I want to tell you about something brand new, brand new, which is being launched today. Uh, and as many of you know, I run the Value Pricing Academy. And one of the things I want to do is help people in the academy become the most successful accountants and bookkeepers in the world. I teach value pricing, marketing, uh, advisory skills. But I also, because people in the academy have been asking me, uh, I want to teach how you can tap into this opportunity. So we are launching today brand new training where I'm going to build on the things that I'll talk about today. It's a brand new academy, uh, which I've developed for the Value Price Academy, but what I decided to do is, because I think the whole profession needs this, I'm going to give you the opportunity, I'll tell you more about it later, to tap into something brand new, and I have something very, very special today. So if it's okay, okay with you, I'll tell you about that later. 
Oh, also, of course, I will answer questions. So if you've got questions, please stick them in the comments box. Uh, I can see the comments box has actually gone crazy lately, which is cool. Um, so Catherine, uh, Catherine says, I was required to sing in front of people once. I'm no singer. I'm not a singer at all. You might have seen me in the countdown music singing along, but fortunately for you, I had the mute button because as Sarah has uh, often tells me, I absolutely cannot sing. I wish I could. It's the one skill of all things I can't do. It's the one thing I wish I could do I could sing because that's the one thing I wish I could be if it wasn't what I'm doing now, be a singer, a rock singer. Uh, anyway, uh, so Catherine said I was required to sing. I was prepared to jump out the nearest window ever since No Trouble At All talking in front of people. That's uh, great, Catherine. Um, so I'm going to read these comments later because I think these are going to be, uh, Russell says, my final exam in public speaking at university, the professor recommended everyone have a drink beforehand to loosen up. Uh, that is really good advice, by the way, but I think what he means is a drink of water because water, uh, and, and you may notice that I'm always drinking water before I start because you want to loosen up the vocal cords. I, I don't drink lager before speaking normally. That was the one exception. I've never done it since, uh, but yes, water is a good thing to do. Okay, so uh, we're gonna, I'm going to take you through these uh, four different levels. Now, what uh, I have got for you is a, a workbook, so hopefully you've got that, you've downloaded it, grab that workbook, because we'll refer to that uh, from time to time throughout the, the session today. Uh, and so we're going to talk about first, we're going to start at level one. Level one's really about... This is for you if you're, I don't know where you're going to be on this scale, level one to level four, but level one is about just being, is the basics, about being more confident in front of a, a camera uh, and coming across as more professional and standing out. And I'm going to take you through uh, seven, if I've got the right number of fingers, seven, seven of the real basics you need to have in place. But before I go through seven, let me talk about why this is so important. Back in uh, 1983, a behavioral economist called Richard Thaler did an experiment. And interestingly, interestingly uh, it was an experiment with beer. And, and a lot of studies in the world of psychology, price psychology, behavioral econ economics, do, do have beer or wine in it for some particular reason. And Thaler was using beer. And what he was essentially doing uh, is he, he had a group of people in the study and he wanted to find out how much they were prepared to pay for a particular bottle of beer. Now, the bottle of beer was the same for everybody in the study. In other words, the, the product didn't change whatsoever. But he wanted to find out how much people were willing to pay for that bottle of beer. And the only thing that changed is the way it was sold. And I call this the power of context, the context in which it was sold. And what Thaler found was that People are willing to pay a very different price depending on where and how it was sold. So, for example, if somebody went to a corner store, which is a bit messy, and in the corner uh, the, the bottles of beer are, are stacked up and they're all a bit dusty and they're randomly stacked up, people are willing to pay a lower price than if they bought exactly the same beer in the hotel bar next door where it's stored in the refrigerator. It's got kind of a little bit of ice on the sides of it. It looks perfectly cool. It's a hot day outside. People will pay significantly higher prices, sometimes two or three times the price. Now, interestingly, this kind of, this power of context has been studied a number of times in behavioral economics, in price psychology. And Another study in 2002 was from two price psychologists called Adavala Munro, which was reported in um, the Journal of Consumer Research. And let me just read to you uh, what this says, and then I'm going to explain what it actually means. So they said in the conclusion, the context in which a product is seen influences the internal standard that consumers use to judge both this and other products. Two experiments showed that a product was judged as less expensive in a high price context than in a low price context, even though the product's actual price was recalled as higher in the first condition than in the second. Now, let me explain what that means, because that probably sounds like mumbo jumbo. But essentially, what it says is that the way that you sell something, the context has a huge impact on how much people are willing to pay. So how does that apply to you? Well, if we think about the old way, the old fashioned way of how we would meet with clients, for example, or prospective clients, 
And this is something I've taught for several years in the Pri Value Pricing Academy, the power of context, that if, you are meet if a prospect's meeting with you and they come to your office and they sit in your room, in your office, and in your office you have a desk that's so messy, it's got files everywhere, you've got files on the floor, and the, the, the secretary comes along and he or she serves coffee and the coffee is a little bit dirty there's still some stains coming down the side from the coffee there's perhaps some lipstick on the other side because it wasn't washed properly all these things will impact on how much that prospect will be willing to pay you could be the best accountant or the best bookkeeper in the world but if you've got that environment that context people are going to want to pay a lower price now alternatively if you have a beautiful boardroom and if when somebody comes into the meeting, they're given a menu of drinks and they can order a drink from you know, tea, coffee, perhaps. And some accountants offer things like champagne and so on because this really does work. And imagine they want tea and it's served, and it's served on a beautiful tray in beautiful china cups. And imagine as you do your presentation, this boardroom is immaculate. And when you do the presentation, perhaps what you want to do is show them something on a screen. And rather than huddled around a little laptop, you have a big display at the end of the boardroom. And so everybody's looking at this huge uh, flat screen TV while you go through your presentation. When you have that, people will be willing to pay, expect to pay, and be willing to pay higher prices. That's the power of context. It makes a huge difference. Please do not underestimate this because this can make a difference in how much you can charge the sort of clients you win by not just a few percent, but sometimes you get double the price just because of the context. The problem is the world's changed because you're probably finding right now that you're not having so many meetings actually face to face. We're having meetings on Zoom. We're having meetings on Microsoft Teams, whatever it might well be. And this situation isn't going to change in a hurry. I think this world, even though, even as we come out of lockdown, we're going to be able to start meeting people. Increasingly, I think this world, this online world, isn't going to go away because there are lots of other benefits, lots of other advantages. And so the power of context is, means that we have to position ourselves in a professional way. And so I want to share with you what are the, what are the seven key things that you need to be looking at. And in the workbook, if you've got the workbook, and if you haven't, don't worry, because I'm going to walk you through it. But in the workbook, uh, I've, I'm going to go through the seven areas. And this is what I want you to do. As I go through these seven areas, I want you to score yourself on a score of one to 10, where 10 is you're doing it really, really well, professional quality, whereas one is pretty poor. So how, are you, how would you score yourself on one to 10 on each of these seven factors as I go through them. And what score would you like to have? If you, if you think forward to late at the end of this year, the end of this year, what score would you like to have? Okay, so let me take you through what the seven are. The first one is when you're having online meetings, the video quality is important. You want to think about the video quality. What, what's, your, what's your webcam like? Because there are different levels that you can go to, different levels of professionalism, and it does make a difference. Remember the power of context. So what you could do, and I don't recommend this, but what I sometimes see is people using the webcam that's built in onto their computer. That's usually pretty low quality. It's, it's kind of, it can sometimes be okay on a Mac computer. They're not too bad, but usually it's, it's not good enough. You should not be using a webcam on that's built into your computer. The exception to that is if you decide to have a meeting using, for example, an iPad or maybe even your, your iPhone, the iPhone 12. The Apple phones and iPads have excellent cameras, but, but not so much on the computers. I would not use an internal webcam. You want to use an external webcam, but there are so many different ones in the marketplace. You want to have a good quality one. The one that I used for many years was a Logitech C920. I don't know how long it's been out for now. I think I've had mine for about, let me think, six or seven years. It probably came out eight or nine years ago. It's got a HD lens, Carl Zeiss Zener lens. It's a great webcam. I would say that's probably the bare minimum that you want now. 
because the world's changing. And you have to remember that people are comparing you to other people. You are in competition with everybody. Everybody's online doing online training, meetings, whatever. And so people will judge you based on not even just not not even comparing you to other people in the profession, but other people that they see. And so you want to make sure that you are continually looking to up your game. So a webcam is, is, uh, is a bare minimum, and I would look for something of at least the quality of a Logitech C920. So that's video. Video is really important. How can you make sure that you're not blurry, that you're clear, that you look great on video? Okay, number uh, two, uh, and this is related to that, is the lighting. How good is your lighting? Have a look at the next time you do an online meeting. Look at yourself and judge the lighting. Is the lighting good? Uh, the, the big mistake that I sometimes see, and perhaps you've seen this as well, is people are having a meeting. They've turned their webcam on. They're sat at their desk in their office. It's a lovely office. It's nice and light because they have a beautiful big window right behind them. So they can turn around, look out the window, and look at the view. The trouble is, in front of a camera, a webcam, what happens because of all that bright light behind, it shuts down the lens because there's too much light and you end up looking like you're in witness protection. It looks like that you're a silhouette. And people still do that. And this, this is important. This makes a huge difference in how professional you are. Lighting is really important. These days, there are so many good quality studio lights, there's no real excuse not to have some good lighting. So how good is your lighting? Uh, what, what, what scale on, on 1 to 10? And where do you think it needs to be by the end of this year? Let's move on to number uh, three. Number three to think about is what I call the studio. What I basically mean by that is, what does everything look like around you, behind you? Remember, remember the power of context that I said that if you've got a messy office, then that's going to impact on how much people are willing to pay. If you've got a beautiful office, then that has a different impact. So again, think about where you are doing the videos. What's the background look like? We're increasingly doing online stuff now. So if necessary, have another space in your office where you go to. That's exactly what I do uh, for different reasons I might come on to. But my office is kind of, you can't see it, but it's behind, it's behind you. Uh, and I come here to do my videos, meetings, whatever it might well be. Because it's important to have something that looks good. Wants to be clean, tidy, doesn't want to be too distracting. Now, what some people do, and, and this is something that I, I, I personally don't like, but there are a lot of people who are using green screen. I hate green, green screen because, A, you can usually, when it's not done really well, you can see the outline around people. It's kind of strange little halo effect. It's obvious that it's a, it's a green screen. And also, people tend to use green screens that we're behind. It's just so distracting, and it's taking away from the message. So I am not a big fan of green screen unless you do it really well, and most people don't. So think about... Number three, think about what, the, what it looks like around you, your studio setting. So we've got the quality of the video camera, the webcam you're using. You've got to think about the lighting. You've got to think about the studio. Now, by the way, you do not have to have it perfect from day one. You, you're probably fine right now. What I want you to think about, though, and this is why I want you to score yourself, is bit by bit, I want you to focus on upping your game, just getting a little bit better. Um, and if you've got questions about these things, stick them in the comments and I will come to questions. We'll get to questions later. Okay, number four in the workbook, I've called it, I've called it you and, uh, and composition. And what I mean by that is what do you look like? Are you dressed smartly or at least in the way that you want to present your personality? How do you look? Uh, do you look like you've just woken up and your hair's a mess or did you have a shower? I think because we now work from home a lot more, since the pandemic, and we wake up and we come down our pyjamas and so on, we don't tend to uh, we very often think about ourselves, our appearance, quite the same way as when we go to a physical office. But nevertheless, this is important. What do you look like? Does it get across your personality? It doesn't mean you have to be in a suit and tie, but just are you presentable? How do you look? But not just how do you look, but your composition in front of the camera. Because composition is really important. Uh, I see another thing that I find looks terrible is when people are using, for example, a webcam that's on their laptop and they're looking down at it. 
Uh, and there's a reason why you don't want to do that. It's not a flattering look. But also people don't think about composition. I see people that are on meetings and they're, they're down here like this with all this space around them and they're down here. And I'm thinking that looks really, really weird. It, it's just little changes, just the way you position your webcam can make all the difference in terms of how professional you come across. And if you're thinking this isn't important, it is. Remember the power of context. So how good is your, is, how good do you come across in terms of the, the, the visuals? How do you look and your composition? Number five, now this is the most important. Number five, the most important, at least so far. Number five is yes, your video is important, your lighting is important, but the most important thing is the quality of your audio. People will be forgiving if they can't quite see you, but they can't hear you if they can't understand what you're saying. People will zone out. They won't listen. Your audio is the most important thing when it comes to thinking about your equipment. And that means thinking about not just having the right microphone, which is important, but also you want to think about the, the audio quality of where you are. And as well as microphone, it's things like echoes a big problem. And it's something that I, I, I'll, I'll share with you one of my huge mistakes uh, just last year, a huge mistake I made. So we, we moved out to uh, Portugal uh, in a bit of a hurry. We, we made the decision in early 2020 that we wanted to come and live in Portugal. We came out here, we came to Lisbon, spent some time in Lisbon, loved the place, Rafael, it's an awesome place. And so we, we put our name down on a, a two-year lease on an apartment in Pered, which is, if you don't know, Pered's halfway between Lisbon and Cascais. Amazing place. Um, the trouble is, we went back to the UK just to say goodbye to family and got caught in the lockdown. We were only going back to the UK for, for a couple of weeks in March, and we got locked, hit, locked down. So there's nothing we could do. We were stuck. We got this apartment empty apartment, but we couldn't get our furniture shifted because, because of lockdown, the, 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 the furniture removal companies weren't able to come and collect the furniture. And then suddenly, right at the start of May, we get the telephone call from the removal company saying, we can come Monday, we can come Monday, we can pick up the furniture. So we arranged that. And then Sarah and I started to look at, think about, well, how do we get there? Because we weren't sure if we could drive uh, through the channel tunnel uh, and underneath the channel and, and through France. That wasn't, uh, it wasn't clear that you could cross the Spanish border because Spain was having it tough. So we booked a flight, to, uh, I think it was nine days later, to Lisbon. So we booked a flight to Lisbon. Furcher was en route at that point in time, but that wouldn't have arrived for a few days. So we booked an Airbnb uh, in Pered, just down the road from where our apartment was. We arrived in Lisbon at the end of May and we went to the, the Airbnb. And the problem I'd got, I'd, I'd committed a few weeks earlier to run a webinar to hundreds of people in the US. I'd committed to run a webinar. And at the time that I made that commitment, we thought we'd probably be in the UK with my usual setup. We get to, uh, it happens to be the day after we arrive in, in uh, Lisbon. And the Airbnb that we're at has really ropey Wi-Fi as it usually is in these places. The why, and we just thought we cannot run this webinar in this Airbnb. It's just not, it, it's not good enough. So we went down to the apartment and the apartment had, we, we already got somebody, when we got the apartment sorted out, we got someone to put the Wi-Fi in and it had amazing Wi-Fi, way better than the UK. Wi-Fi generally in, in, in Portugal we find is really good. So we decided because the Wi-Fi was so strong in this apartment, we'd run the webinar from there. What I'd not thought about, and this is a really stupid mistake, what I'd not thought about is this apartment was empty. Our furniture hadn't arrived at this point. It's empty. Not only is it empty, unlike the UK, where we have carpets, we have curtains, they don't tend to have those in Mediterranean countries. They have, in this case, it was a wooden floor, no curtains. And so the echo was incredible. So I sat there doing this webinar. We got, uh, fortunately, there was a, a plastic table on the balcony and a plastic chair. So I set up my laptop in the middle of this big empty lounge to do the webinar. Didn't think anything until we went live and suddenly the chat box is filling up. We can't hear you, Mark. We can't understand a word you're saying. Because there's so much echo going on, it's really hard to listen. People were bailing out of the webinar because they couldn't hear anything. They couldn't understand what I was saying. 
So audio is critically important. How good is your audio? Have you ever listened back to yourself to see what other people, whether they can hear you properly? The audio is so important. It's one of the reasons why we have a special studio here because it's a big problem in Portugal. We don't have curtains, we don't have, we have a huge great big room here and echo is a big problem. So uh, you need to be thinking about the audio quality. Let's move on to how we do it. Let's move on to number six. So number six is what I call the production. What I mean by that is when you have a meeting with a client or a prospect, as well as you, uh, you talking to them, you may want to show them things. It may be that you, you have some slides. It may be you want to show them a copy of their accounts on the screen. It may be if, you're, if you are having a pricing conversation with the prospect, it might be you use the effective pricing software and you pull up effective pricing on the screen to walk them through that. And as you know, if you use tools like Zoom, Zoom enables you to use screen share. So with screen share, you can therefore show people stuff. And that's great. It's really powerful. But my question to you is, how slick is that? How slick is the process? Or do you have those moments sometimes where you're talking to the client, you say, let me just show you something. Hang on a second. I just need to find the button somewhere in Zoom. It's somewhere up here, screen share. Okay, I need to share... Um, yep, yeah, let me just share the website here. I think I'm pressed. Can you see it? Can you see it? I'm not sure if you can or not. Uh, oh, no, hang on. Sorry, I've, I'm sharing the wrong thing, aren't I? Let me move on to this. That's not very professional. So, yes, it's easy to do screen share and stuff, but how, how, the whole production, the whole way that you do things, how professional is the flow? Have you got it all set up so that you can very quickly, if you want to uh, share something, so, for example, if I want to share um, the, the workbook, for example, can you share it really, really easily? Or are you fumbling around to get to the things that you want to show? That's what I call the production. How professional is the whole thing? Then there's number seven. I said audio is the most important thing. Actually, audio is the second most important thing. The most important thing of these seven things is the message. This is how good are you at communicating? How clear are you? How confident do you come across? Perhaps with clients you know really well, you feel comfortable and that's okay. But if it's a prospect, do you feel nervous when you're talking to somebody you've never met, you've never met before, and and it's all online. Uh, I know I do. Um, I, I said to you earlier, I'm an extreme introvert. And uh, I, I found when I ran my accounting firm that I got comfortable with meeting strangers, prospects face to face. What I really struggled with was I had a fear of the telephone. I still have a fear of the telephone. I hated phoning people, particularly people I didn't really know very well, like prospects when I was following up after the meeting. I hate that. And I know right now that if I was, if I was running an accounting firm, I would feel very nervous about jumping on a Zoom call with a prospective client, more so than the old fashioned way where you meet people. And so how do you come across? Are you confident? Are you clear in what you say? Uh, are you, we need to learn, we, it's even more important that we become good at communicating. And that means things like, we have to learn uh, the communication skills, like changing your pitch, changing the pace at which we speak, and not fall into the trap that a lot of people, and perhaps a lot of accountants do, which we, we come across, we speak in a monotone, and we sound a little bit boring, and, uh, and we just say, say at the same level all the time. And we tend to talk in jar jargon, and because we're nervous, we sometimes talk a little bit too quickly, we don't pause properly. Uh, and we also start to go, you know, um, we, we start to have these uh, ums and ahs, and and use these filler phrases like, you know, you like, and uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, oh, what, what do I mean to say? Oh, and we start getting frustrated. And as we start getting frustrated and, and nervous, and the more we're nervous, and we, we, we start to stumble over our words, and, and we're not making any sense whatsoever. And people are losing, people are losing the will to live, listen to you. We have to learn how to communicate, because this could make the difference between signing up a prospective client and not. The way that we communicate, the way that we have confidence and and the techniques that we use, and even little things like the gestures you, you, that you use have to support the message. And these are things that we, that we need to learn. It's things that I, I, I was very fortunate. I had a great speaker coach, so he taught me uh, how to 
how to use my hands because one of the things I found, and if you look at some very early YouTube videos of mine, I used to do this all the time continually because I was so nervous. I didn't, know what I, was do I didn't know what to do with my hands, so I just did this. And we have these strange little habits that we do that we have to just, we have to become aware of them and, and learn how to get rid of them because they just, what happens is when you're communicating with somebody, if you're doing strange things with your hands, for example, or you have strange mannerisms or something, what happens is people start to focus on that. And when they focus on that, they're not listening to what you are saying. They're not listening to the message. So communication, the way you communicate, is so important. So they're the, they're the seven things that we have to really get better at as we communicate in this online world. So my question for you is, each of those seven, how would you score yourself right now on each of those seven? And don't worry if it's low on some of them. It probably is, and that's fine. At least you're aware of the importance. So how, what's your score right now? And what would you like it to be by the end of the year? Now, I know eventually you'd love to be a 10 out of 10 in all of them. 10 out of 10 would be awesome. Um, but for some of those things, that might take a bit of time. If we can just improve our scores uh, and get more confident, become more professional, then you'll, what will happen is you'll start to stand out and differentiate yourself from others. Okay, let's move on to, how are we doing for time? We're doing pretty good. Uh, let's move on to level two. So level one is just being, level one's about being more professional when, we, we, when we're communicating online, one to one. That's when you're talking to your clients, talking to your team, talking to a prospective client. As we get better at that, then we can move to level two. Level two is where we start to use video. That sounds scary. Why video? Well, video is so powerful. You may have heard uh, video marketing is widely regarded as one of the most powerful forms of marketing. Video is so important, so powerful. Particularly, I believe, in this profession. In this profession, why? Because we're in the people industry, we're in the relationship industry. The reason why your clients buy from you is because of you, because of your personality. It's not because of what you do, it's because of you. That's why they buy from you. And so when you're marketing, for example, people buy from people they like. When people are looking for a new bookkeeper or a new accountant, they want somebody that they feel that they like. If they can get to see you via a video that they come across, like on your website, on a YouTube channel, when people can see you, they can say, oh, I like this, this person seems a really good person. They know, they know their stuff. I like the sound of them. I'd like to meet them. Video is so powerful. And I'm going to take you through nine different uses of video. But before I do that, I'm guessing that you're a bit worried about the idea of doing video. Perhaps you're thinking, do you know, I, I don't think I can do video. I haven't got the confidence. I, I will be terrible in front of a camera. I, I, I just can't do video. If that's the case, if you, can't have, if you think you can't do video, tell me in the chat box. Well, how do you feel about video? Is this something that you feel you just could not do? I'd love to know. So, so uh, let's see if anyone has typed anything. I'm, there's a load of comments in there. Uh, and uh, Robin Joy says, watch yourself on video. I did not even know that I spoke with my hands. Uh, absolutely, Robin. You, that's a good, great tip. We need to watch ourselves back because we don't realize the things that we're doing. Uh, Florida Virtual Bookkeeper said, I speak with my hands and it's a conscious effort to hold back on that. Absolutely. Um, so Video, uh, Philip says, I've been thinking about doing videos. I've been thinking about doing videos. Um, Lisa says, I just mainly wouldn't know what to talk about. Uh, um, but Dan's been doing them for, for a while. Here's the thing. If you're thinking to yourself, I just don't know if I could do videos. I'm not sure I'm ready to do videos. I'm not sure. Then let me, let's think about it like this. Let me ask you this question. And Yes, looking forward to using videos in marketing. Stanley Dean says, um, I can't conceive of doing videos. The mere thought makes me want to run for the hills. That's Rebecca. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so Rebecca can't conceive of it. But here's the thing, Rebecca, and anybody else who says that. Let me ask you these two questions. Question number one. Have you had an online meeting with a client or a prospect before? You know, you've, you, whether it's Zoom, whether it's Microsoft Teams, 
have you had an online meeting? Now, if I'd have asked that two or three years ago, I'd have probably had most people say, no, I've not done that. I'll have face-to-face -face meetings. But the world's changed. The world's changed. And so I would be very surprised if anyone says that. I'm sure Raphael says, I'm scared in front of a camera. Um, don't eat spinach before your calls, Dan. No, I agree. Lisa says, yes. I know, uh, unless someone says, no, they have not had a meeting with a client online, I'm going to assume everybody has. You've all had a meeting with a client online. So think about one of your recent meetings online with a client or prospect. When you met that client or prospect online, and you were talking to a webcam, was there a point in that meeting where perhaps they asked a question and you delivered some real value? Perhaps you spent three or four minutes explaining a tax planning idea. Perhaps you spent three or four minutes talking about how you could solve their problem, talking about how they need to, what they need to record as part of their paperwork, whatever it might well be. Have you at some point this year had a conversation with a client and at some point you've spoken for three or four minutes and given them some advice that's valuable? And I'm hoping the answer is yes. Because you've all said, nobody said they haven't had an online meeting. And so I'm hoping that in that meeting, you've delivered some advice. Now, think of it this way. With t systems like Zoom, there's a record button. You can record Zoom meetings. Did you know that? You can record Zoom meetings. If you recorded that meeting, and then you cropped it in some simple editing software, you cropped it to that three or four minutes where you gave some great advice to that client, Guess what? That's a video. That's a video. In other words, for the last year, you've been doing videos. You might not have thought about it in that way, but you have been doing videos. You've been talking on a webcam to clients, giving great stuff, great advice, answering their questions. That could be a video. So why can't you do videos? You can, you can do it. Everything is, you're doing everything you need to do to do a video. You can do this. So let me think, let me share with you some different ways of using video. And I think I have, if I remember right, uh, I think I have, uh, yeah, if you've got the workbook, I'm going to go through nine different ways that you can use video. So the first one, number one, is the first way of using video is, of course, I said video marketing. And so you could create a YouTube channel. And that will be a great thing to do. And I know many people are scared of that whole idea, scared of doing YouTube channels, but it's, you, you can do video. YouTube marketing or video marketing is so, so powerful, you could do a YouTube channel. But I get it. That might be a bit scary. That might not be for now. That might be something for the future. And that's fine. There are other ways that you can use video. You could use video on your website. And I strongly recommend that because, as I've said, we're in the relationship business. People buy from people they like, particularly in a service industry when they're looking to buy and hire an accountant, a bookkeeper, a tax advisor, somebody that they'll be working with for several years to come. They want somebody. They want to buy from people they like. People go to visit your website when they're looking for an accountant or a bookkeeper. But they'll look at other websites as well. Why will they choose you? Why choose you when they go to the website? Well, one of the things you must do with your website is get across you, get across your personality. And what's the best way to get across your personality? It's not the words that are written on the website. It's when they can watch a video of you explaining the sorts of clients that you work with and how you help them and what your expertise is. So video is really, video's really powerful on your website. You absolutely must have a video on your website to welcome, to introduce yourself to people looking for an accountant or a bookkeeper. Uh, that's number two. Number three, another reason for video is when you sign up a brand new client, I'm guessing that you have some form of onboarding process. You should do an onboarding process. Video is a great thing to build into your onboarding process. It may be you send them an email once they've signed up as a client and you do a video just to welcome them and thank them for joining your firm. You could use that video to tell them some things they need to do next, explain why they need to sign this piece of paper, whatever it might well be. Video is a great way as part of your automated process for bringing a brand new client on. 
Number four, if you're in the Value Pricing Academy, that you'll know I talk a lot about the appointment generation system, about having a system to get high. And I know David Pankovic is here. I've just seen him. He has this system absolutely nailed. And so one of the things you want to do is have a system for getting high quality appointments. And building video into that is a great way to introduce yourself, to explain why you might have a pre-qualification process, to explain what the person can expect in that first meeting. Really powerful stuff. How else can you use video? You can use a video if you ever have a client, if you ever have a marketing system where perhaps you give something away for free, an ebook, you have what's called an opt in page, a lead page, or perhaps you want to run a webinar or an event and you want people to register for it, or maybe you're selling something. Whether it's a sales page, whether it's a registration page, whether it's a, a, an opt in page, a landing page, any form of page where you want people to put in their name and their email address, then videos are really powerful because you can use the video to reinforce and explain the benefits, why they want to do that. What's the benefit of your ebook? What are they going to get from the ebook? Why do they want to put their name and email address in? If it's a webinar you're running, what's they, what are they going to learn on the webinar? Yes, you can put it in bullet points in, in written form, but reinforce it with a video because videos are powerful. They get to see you. You can you can talk about things you're using your your uh, your passion your enthusiasm, you can go into more detail in a video than in the text because you can say so much more in a video. So if you have any form of landing page, registration page for a webinar, an event, sales page, opt-in page, lead page, whatever. Next idea is, and this one is something that's really powerful that perhaps you've never thought about. Think about how could you use video to add value to your clients, to add value to your clients. So it may be that you've done their tax return, or you've done their end of year financial statements, or you're doing some advisory work and you've done their management reports for the month. And it may be you have a meeting with them as well or not. Either way, whether you have a meeting or not, why not do a video to talk them through the numbers? It may be you pull up the tax return, you turn your webcam on, and you talk them through some of the key things about the tax return. Or if it's some management reports, you pull up the reports you've created with the graphs and the charts, and you then do some commentary. You talk through them, and you send that as a video file. Now, that will make you stand apart as being different. You've taken the time to create a video for a client, but it doesn't take long once you know the process. You could do a five, 10 minute video like that, this systems will allow you to, uh, which is the next thing I'm going to talk about, there's this tools that you can use now that makes that so easy to do. One of the tools that you can use, and this is the next idea, so I think I'm on number seven. If I've got my numbers right, I'll pull up a slide in a bit and I'll run through them. In fact, let me do it now, because I do sometimes lose track. I know I'm an accountant, but sometimes I lose track of the numbers. So create a YouTube channel. So if you are working through the workbook, create a YouTube channel, your website to attract people, onboarding clients, the appointment generation system, sales leads, sales pages, lead pages, registration pages, adding value to clients. So number seven is faster communication with a tool like Loom, for example. Let me explain what I mean. So firstly, I love Loom. Loom is a fantastic tool that I was introduced to about two years ago. Kay Westmoreland's just put in the, Kay says, Loom is good for this sort of video. Absolutely, Kay, it is. Loom is brilliant because what happens is you turn your camera on, you press that button called record. The only things you might want to choose is, do you want to record you with the webcam? Do you want to record what's on the screen or both. It's as simple as that. You just choose what you want to do. So it may be that you want to uh, give some commentary on the, the report. So you record the, the, the screen, which is your report, and you have a little picture in picture of you uh, just uh, so they can see you as well. And then you just hit that record button. You do the little video on Loom. As soon as you hit stop, then it creates a link. You just send the link to somebody. So you can use Loom as Kay quite rightly says. For, for doing commentary on accounts, for doing something to add value to clients. But number seven is about using it, to, using it for more effective communication. What do I mean by that? 
as we move into this digital world and not going to offices, we have to communicate in a different way, not just with clients and prospects, but also our team members as well, with other people. So we have our team member is Emily. Uh, Emily's in the UK. Emily is Sarah's daughter, many of you know. Emily's in the UK and we're here. And so when you want to communicate something, share something, perhaps you want to explain how to do something, yes, we can write emails. The problem with writing emails is if it's a long email, it takes time. Do you ever find you spend ages writing this email and you think, oh, I wish I'd actually sit now. Let me edit that and change that. And we craft these long emails that take us ages to get across a simple idea. And then the other problem with email is, as you know, there can often be miscommunication. Sometimes we put in writing and we don't actually explain what we really meant. People just interpret the wrong way. I see that so many times. Email communication can be misinterpreted. But if instead we use a system like Loom and we explain, the benefits of that is, number one, it's actually much quicker. It saves you so much time. If I want Emily to go and do a task of some sort, it's much easier to hit that record button, describe what I want to do, perhaps show it on the screen as well, which, which then means that when you do it, that way, A, it saves me time, and B, when it's explained via a video with perhaps screen share, it's easy to understand what I'm saying, so it's more likely that the task will be done right the first time. <laughs> so it's going to save you so much time using video to communicate to people rather than the written communication. So that's the seventh reason for for video. Uh, number eight, eight, which is kind of an extension of that. Number eight is video is a great way of, uh, of creating your own internal systems. So you all know, you're, you're accounting professional, systems are something that we're comfortable with. We have checklists, we have tax return preparation checklists, audit checklists, we have systems for doing bookkeeping, how we do a bank reconciliation, we have all these systems. And if you have team members, you want to make sure that team members follow the system. And yes, you can write a series of steps and so on, but again, written communication can sometimes be misinterpreted. Much easier to hit that button on Camtasia, Loom or something, and then describe the system, explain what that person needs to do. So video is great for systems. And I think I've got to number, that was number eight, I believe. Uh, and so for those of you filling in the workbook, number nine is you know, training courses. So you could take that idea a step further if you're doing videos and you could do a training course. That could be a training course to onboard your team members. It could be a training course that you create, that you sell. And I know there are some accountants doing this now. They're creating videos uh, for their clients that they can then buy. Uh, so you might do, I don't know what your expertise is, but let's say it's business advisory, helping clients grow their business. You could do a video program on that, a video course, and then you could sell that to clients. So there's, there's nine different reasons for, for video. Let's move on to uh, level three. So level one is... How do we get better with just that online communication from a one-to-one -one point of view? Level two is when we can step it up and start to scale things with video. So many reasons why video, so many different uses of video, and, and so many reasons. I said to you earlier, you're effectively doing video right now. When you talk on a Zoom call to a client, you're effectively doing it. It's the same thing as, 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 a, as a Zoom, as a, as a video. It's the same, it's the same process. All you need to do, you can do video. All you need to do now is go back to those seven things I said earlier where you scored yourself because as you improve the scores on those seven things, not only will you become more confident and better in those one-to-one -one communications, but you'll also find you're now doing more professional quality videos as well. Videos is just the natural extension to what you're already doing right now with Zoom online, Zoom meetings, Microsoft Team meetings, whatever it happens to be, video is just a natural extension. It's the same set of skills that we need, and we just uh, create these videos that we can then reuse. So let's move on to level three. Level three, when we take things to another level entirely and, and tap into a new opportunity in our firms, is historically as a business, we tend to do everything one to one. We work with clients one-to-one, -one, our selling process is one-to-one. -one. 
when we want to get a new client, we meet somebody, a prospect, and we go through our one-to-one -one process. And that's great. There's a lot of benefits for that. It works really well. But can we scale? Well, yes, we can, because what we can then do is start thinking about other forms of communication online where we commute not just one-to-one, -one, but one-to-many. So what I'm talking about here is webinars and live streaming. Webinars and live streaming. So webinars, why, why webinar and what, or, or live stream? Why would you want to do webinar? Well, you've got the kit, okay? You use it, you've got Zoom, you've got your webcam, you've got the things you need. Why not do some webinars? With webinars, you can scale. So it might well be, for example, let's say something news come out, with, and over the last year, there's been lots of things to do with COVID, where the government's brought out something brand new. So I, I remember we're in the UK, uh, back in uh, March 2020 in the UK, the news was full of furlough. I actually had no idea what furlough was because I, I, don't, I don't employ people that's where that's a, there's a need for that. But I realized everyone was talking about furlough and, and there's lots of you know, confusion. Business owners were saying, well, can I do this? Can I, can I get access to this and so on? Imagine that you ran a webinar, uh, which was perhaps seven things you need to know to get access to the latest government, uh, the go government reliefs for COVID. Just for example, I'm just throwing a random thing out, okay? Imagine you create a webinar which you invite your clients, your prospects, everybody on your email list. Perhaps you post it in some other places through social media. And let's imagine you got 20, 30, 40, 50 people show up. You can then present not one-to-one, -one, but you could present to, to dozens of people. And if they're potential clients that have never perhaps seen you before, now suddenly what you're doing is you're sharing your knowledge, you're positioning yourself as the expert, people are watching you, they're loving what you're saying, and some of them are thinking, do you know what, this is an accountant or a bookkeeper that knows their stuff. My existing accountant bookkeeper hasn't been, been telling me this stuff, this is great. And then what you can do at the end of it is you can have an offer, and the offer might well be book an appointment. Here's the link, here's my Calendly link, book an appointment. If you've got 30, 40 business owners on that webinar, you might find that 10, 20, 30% of them click on the link, book an appointment with you. And half of them may become clients. Webinars are so powerful uh, for, uh, firstly, just positioning yourself, getting your name out there, building your brand. Secondly, for building your email list because people give you their email address to join a webinar. Uh, and thirdly, webinars are a great way to communicate with lots of people, one to many, and drive people to whatever result you want, which is probably, in your case, uh, an appointment. So webinars are really powerful from that point of view. They're also powerful as well for getting the message out to existing clients. It may be your goal isn't to sell something, to sell a meeting with you. Your goal is simply that you want to help as many clients as possible. So if there's something new comes out, a new relief with COVID, for example, that you want to communicate with your clients, you haven't got the time perhaps to call every single one of them and have a one-to-one -one call. So what you might do is you might put it in your newsletter. But newsletters people don't t tend to read because there's all sorts of other stuff in the newsletter. Yes, you should have a newsletter perhaps, but it's people are going to miss messages. So go to your entire client base and say, I'm running a webinar. I'm going to share with you this latest thing that's going to help you get access to government funding because of COVID. And then a bunch of your clients turn up and you deliver and add value to multiple clients all at once. What a great way to add value. So that's, that's why you want to get into webinars, live streams, because you can just scale things to another level. So let's talk a bit about just some differences between um, live versus video. So video is great for the reasons I've said, but doing things live, this is, why I talk, this is about level three, why I think live is even better still. And when I say live, by the way, I'm referring to not just webinars where you jump on a Zoom call and talk to lots of people, but it could be that just like I'm doing, you could use Facebook Live. You could use YouTube Live if you have enough subscribers and you've got access to that. But certainly Facebook Live is another way that you could do it. I know that if you're in the Value Pricing Academy, some of you are now starting to follow my advice and set up your own Facebook groups. You could go live on your in your groups. Really, really simple to do uh, as a, as another level.
to communicate with more people, get across your, your passion, your personality, your energy, and demonstrate that you are the expert. So why live versus video? Well, if you can do video, and I've demonstrated already that you can, if you're talking to a Zoom a webcam on Zoom or Microsoft Teams, you can do video. If you can do video, you can do live. And I would argue that whilst live might be more scary, some, I think, and I'm including, I include myself in this, by the way, uh, I, 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 did, I started my YouTube channel in 2011. And, uh, and actually, I, I might, if you want me to, I'll show you my very first YouTube video. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's another embarrassing moment. Uh, I started in 2011. Uh, I, having got good at video, I was worried about doing live, uh, Facebook Live, and I don't know why. It was an internal thing. It, and a lot of these things that stop us doing things are internal things, these doubts and these negative self-talks that we have. And what I've realized is that live is actually easier. And it's better. Why is live better? Number one, because you get more engagement with your audience if it's live. And I can see right now an engagement in, in the, some of you are putting in the chat, chat box right now. Lisa says, yes, please. Uh, I have people commenting. So you get engagement. You get reaction from people, which you don't get, get with a video. So you get that engagement, which is better. Uh, it's also when you are live, you are naturally more conversational. And what I mean by that is one of the challenges with video is that we feel it has to be perfect. And that gives us that fear. And then we think it has to be perfect. So we then make a mistake and we then say, oh, no, I need to film that again. Let's start all over again. Uh, and we end up spending ages refilming, refilming, refilming. And then we end up editing, editing, editing. I can't edit this. I'm live, okay? What you see is what you get. I, I've made mistakes. I stuttered over some of my words. But people forgive you in that live environment. And so live is, is easier. It's also, it means that you've got less preparation. It's, it's just much easier because you are, you're saving yourself time because you're not making these, well, you will make mistakes, but people forgive you when you make mistakes. So you just become more natural uh, and you communicate better. You create that engagement uh, when, you, when, you are, uh, when you're live. Um, and also the other thing is there's a sense of immediacy. So what I mean by that, let's go back to this idea of some brand new reliefs have come out which you know can help your clients because of COVID. You have two options. You could do a video to your clients. You could post it on your YouTube channel, for example, and then you might email them and say, we've done this video. Or you could run a webinar and say, I'm going, or, or Facebook Live, and say there's some new reliefs you need to be aware of. I'm going live four o'clock tomorrow, and I'm going to share with you how you can tap in and get some free government money. This is what you'll find. More people will show up to the four o'clock session tomorrow than will watch your video. Why? Because when it's a video, people say, well, that's interesting. I'll watch that sometime. I'll watch that sometime. Oh, I forgot to watch it. I'll watch it tomorrow. I'll watch it tomorrow. But when you are doing something live, they've got to be there at four o'clock tomorrow or they miss it, they're more likely to show up. That sense of immediacy. Sense of immediacy. So live, I, I would suggest to you, is even more powerful than video when you want to communicate your message. It's more powerful and it's actually easier to do. It might sound more scary, but it's actually easier. Okay, I'm going to share one thing I forgot to share, but I'm going to share uh, with you and then we'll move on to, uh, let's, uh, yeah, then we're going to move on to level four, level four. But let me just share, some of you, going back to this video idea, some of you might be thinking, I don't know if I'm very good at video. I'm going to wait till I'm perfect. Don't wait till you're perfect. Nobody's born to do video. Nobody's going to be perfect. All I want you to do is go back to that first, those first seven ideas, score yourself, and then aim to just get a bit better at a time. I started my first video, my, my YouTube channel in 2011. I'd been speaking for 11 years at that point in time. Remember I spoke for Steve Pipe in, actually, um, it was, it was uh, October 1999. It took me tw almost 12 years to do my first video. It was, it was the summer of 2011. 
I'd been used to speaking to rooms full of accountants, but for some reason I was really nervous about speaking to a video camera and putting it on YouTube. But I knew I had to do it because I'd heard that video marketing was the big thing and I needed to build up a YouTube channel. So I did. Would you like to see my first YouTube video? It's not quite as embarrassing. No, it's more embarrassing than my wedding video. It's, it's more embarrassing. I won't play it all because we haven't got time. But I just want to, I want to make an important point. So this is my first YouTube video. Hello, are you thinking of setting up your own accountancy practice? My name is Mark Wickersham and back in 1996 that's exactly what I did, starting from scratch and building a practice, initially working from home, which I built up to a, a sizable team of people and sold in 2006. So I just want to share... Oh, that was embarrassing, wasn't it? <laughs> there are so many things that are wrong with that that I could pick up on. Uh, the camera's a bit blurry, it's not very sharp, the lighting's okay, the audio's pretty poor, but I was so wooden. You know, speaking in that monotone. I was speaking too fast. Hi, man. My name is Mark Wickersham. And, and just gabbling the words out. But <laughs> that video has hundreds of views and likes because, and I've not shown you the co all of it, but there's some great content in there. The content is great. And what I want you to take away is that when people watch your videos, when people watch your live streams, watch your webinars. The main thing they want is great content. You have great content. You have huge amounts of knowledge. And so let's get our content out there. Let's get our message out there and get started. Get in the game. Get started. We can improve it over time. I'm embarrassed by my first YouTube video, but we had to start somewhere. There's no way I could have started YouTube like this. I wasn't ready for this. I just got started. So you need to get started with this stuff. Okay, we're gonna move on to level four and take this to a completely another, a, a new level. That is a huge opportunity. Before we do that, can I ask a question? Can you tell me in the comments below, below what's the best thing you've got out so far? What's been the key insight? What's the one thing that you said that you love the idea? The one thing you're gonna do, the one thing you've learned, what is the best thing that you've got? Just let me know in the comments below uh, I'm really interested to know which bit has really hit home, where, what, what's been valuable for you. And uh, while you do that, I'm going to have some water because it loosens up the vocal cords and I've been talking for a long time. So what is the thing that's been the most valuable? And I'll also have a look at some of the comments that are coming through. I saw Randall said, Joyce rapid fire for sure. Uh, Carol says Loom for starting with recording. Loom is brilliant. If you're not using Loom, you absolutely should. Uh, Nancy says adding video to my onboarding process. Great. I look forward to hear how you do that, Nancy. Uh, Nadim says video in the onboarding process as well. So that's already hit home. Shalita says getting started with video marketing. Don't wait to be perfect. Absolutely. You, nobody's perfect to start with. You just have to get in the game, get started. Uh, Scott said, having introductory videos on my website, uh, the Florida Virtual Bookkeeper, the different ways to use video. David Pankovic, hi David, Loom videos for commentary of management reports and client onboarding. And I know you'll go and do those things because David, you are an action taker. Nancy says, getting better equipment. Yes, but don't get hung up on the technology. You can improve it over time. Just get started, get in the game. Okay, what else have we got? Lisa says, the setup on where you video uh, and, and equipment needed. Thank you for that one. Betty says, just getting started. You inspired me to get started and how to get started. Betty, thank you for that. I'm glad I've inspired. Uh, I'm so pleased with that. Gary Wong says, people will listen more to your appearance than to the words coming out of your mouth. Uh, certainly, yes, that's you know, the body language and so on is important. Uh, okay, uh, so many more comments that uh, I'm not gonna get through all of them because I'm conscious. I wanna get into level four. I wanna answer questions as well. Before we, before we get on to level four, I said to you earlier that I have something brand new, and that is I am launching today something called the Online Live Academy. It's something I've created for people in the Value Pricing Academy, but if you're not in the Value Pricing Academy, I want, you to, I want to give you the opportunity to get access to this. What that means is what, what I have start, I'm starting today is I want to help you master all these things. 
master those seven things that I talked about in level one, to be comfortable with doing video, whether it's video for marketing purposes, for onboarding process, whatever, and then start to get comfortable with using technology like webinars, live streaming to get your message out to the audience in a bigger way, to really build up your reputation. And the, here's what I see as the exciting thing. I know you might find it scary to do all of this, but that's great. That's awesome. Because the rest of the profession isn't doing this. How many times do you see accountants doing this and bookkeepers? They're not doing it, which means you can stand out. You can be different. And you know that when you stand out and are seen as being different, you will win more clients. You will win better clients. When you communicate better, when you position yourself as being better, when you think about the power of context, you will, people will be willing to pay you higher prices because they see you as being better. So what I'm going to do in the Online Live Academy is teach you all these things we've touched on today. It'll work like this. I'm going to go live roughly every two weeks. And so a couple of times a month, we're going to go live. And each time we'll have a theme. So we might do level one, then we might do level two, level three. So wherever you are on this journey, there will be training for you where I'll teach you aspects of improving. We're going to spend every session about 60 minutes of training, and then we're going to do q and I'm going to answer your questions. We're launching it today. And uh, so you'll get access to training. I'm going to work with you. I will be your coach to help you master all these skills so that you stand out from all the rest, so that you become more confident in talking to a webcam, that you become confident and start getting better results. As well as the live training, we've got a site where we'll put the recordings. You can access the recordings. There will be resources that we'll create for you. There will be a, we've just set up today, a separate Facebook group. So there'll be a community where we can learn from each other. And I'll have a few little exercises where you can start doing some videos and I will critique them and give you some thoughts and help you to improve the way that you do things. And so that's being launched today. And uh, we decided that, uh, you know, obviously, that the investment is, you'll want to know what that investment is. We decided that for 2021, we're going to put the price up next year, but we were going to, we're going to make the price this year just $120. Uh, however, it's actually going to be, it depends on what currency you're in. So I can't tell you the exact amount because when you click and go on a page, uh, you can click on a link to find out what it is in your particular currency. So if you're in South Africa, you can, uh, you can, you can join in South African Rand. If you're in Canada, Canadian dollars, we've got all the main currencies, just to make it easier for you so you don't have those, those pesky exchange rates and whatever. Here's my guarantee to you, which if you've ever worked with me before, I always have a guarantee, is that any time in the first 30 days, you can change your mind. If it's not right for you, then just simply stop and you can ask for your first payment back. So and at any time you can stop any, you know, there's no minimum period. You just work with me. I'll coach you. I will help you to master these skills for as long as you're getting value. And then you can leave if it's not delivering value. And if in any time in the first 30 days, you decide it's not right for you, then email Sarah and she'll refund you the, your first payment. That's my promise to you. Why? Because you haven't experienced this yet. You, you haven't experienced this yet. You haven't experienced the live training we're going to be doing. We've got our first session coming up uh, very soon, a week on Friday. Uh, one the following week, I think it is. Uh, we'll give you the dates uh, when, when you join. And we have something really special today. And that is today we're actually launching it. Today is the launch. And so I'm going to invite you to be a founder member. OK, and what that means is that you will get a big discount, a special price that's much lower still. Now, how much that is depends on what country you're in and the currency. So what my team is going to do, they're going to post the link to the page where you can find out more information. And then when you click through to the next page, you'll see the different currencies depending on where you are in the world. And you'll see that as a founder that you will get a special a very special price. So go and check that out. And here's the thing. Here's the important thing that I always do. I'm going to put the price up every year. The price will go up every single year. But the price will never, ever change for you. Okay? In other words, as a founder member, this special, and it is a special price, uh, as you will see, this, as a founder member, 
You have locked in the price. It's locked in. As we build more value in the future and the price changes, it will not change for you. It locks the price in. So now is the very... And, and this offer will expire uh, later on today, early hours of the morning, depending on where you are in the world. So uh, go and click on the link that I think uh, Emily's going to share with you, or Sarah. they will give you the link. You'll find more... Grab that link, put it somewhere safe. Uh, there'll be a click-through where you can then see uh, the different currencies. Pick your currency. Jo don't join if you're in the VPA. You'll, you've, it's part of the Value Pricing Academy. Uh, but join me today... And we'll then start working together. I already have a special video in there right away so you can get started before we then meet very soon for session number one. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm sure you've got questions. I will answer your questions. Before I do that, let me talk about level four. So let's just quick recap. Level one, and by the way, the training in the academy will all be focused around these four levels. So over the course of your first year, you will get six live trainings on level one, which is all about helping you just be more, com more confident, having better equipment, more professional looking, tapping into the power of context, being a better communicator for one-to-one -one meetings. And all that level one stuff will help you with level two, three, and four. We'll have six of those in, the in every 12 months, every year. We'll have six sessions on level two. Level two is all about mastering video. Whether you want to use it for marketing purposes, whether you want to use a YouTube channel, whether you just want to use it to communicate with your team, add value to clients, whatever it might well be, we're going to look at mastering video. Six times a year, we'll look at level three, which is then how do we go live? How do we scale things to another level with some webinars? Maybe you want to try out Facebook Live as part of your social media strategy and also helping people. We'll look at all of those things in level three. And then we'll look at level four. And level four is where I see a huge opportunity for you. And this is the opportunity. So our business model has always been about working one-to-one -one in our profession. And so that puts a ceiling, it puts a limitation, a resource limitation uh, on what we can achieve, how many people we can work with. But if we can scale that, then everything starts to change. Let me just tell you about my business. So I'm an accountant, as you know. I then worked with Steve for a while, running AVN, until 2014. 2014 is when I founded the Value Pricing Academy. And I know I have some people here who joined me in 2014. I think I saw Gary Robinson. I think you joined in 2014, if not early 2015. I started, I actually started it. I started the Value Pricing Academy. It wasn't called that back then. I just called it monthly mentoring. But I started it in... June of 2014. In June of 2014, I decided I want to help the profession get better at marketing and pricing. And so my first ever session in June 2014 is six people joined me. Six people joined me online and they paid me a, a monthly subscription. And then in August, I started, I, I ran a second group in August, which was focused just on pricing. And I have people who are still with me in the Value Price Academy today from that August group. Um, I'm not sure if they're here. Well, Kay Westmoreland's here. Kay, you joined me in August 2015. Uh, John Johnson's usually here as well. He comes to those sessions. Uh, Andy's usually here as well. Uh, I don't think, Gary, you joined that first session, but you were soon after. So I then, so, so I, I went from six people. I think in August, another 15 people joined. I had 21 people join me. Now, fast forward from 2014, uh, we are now six, seven years later. I have over 500 people in the Value Pricing Academy and the Bookkeepers Pricing Academy. And what I do is I teach. Once a, once a month, I go online. I teach uh, things to help people be more successful. That's my business model. And the thing is, you could do that as well. As you, as you rise up these levels and become more confident, think of this. What if... What if you had some some knowledge that you could help clients, your clients, which you have. You have some amazing knowledge, whether it's tax, whether it's advisory, whether it's getting the most out of financial systems, whatever it might well be. I'm going to use advisory as a, as as as, as a, an example. So let's imagine that you've got some you you do business advisory and you know some stuff to help clients build more successful businesses, whether it's strategy, goal setting, how to grow a business, how to systemize a business. You've got these skills. 
And you can do advisory one-to-one, -one, and that's absolutely a great thing to do. But what if you could also run an online version and get a group of clients together? I think, Neil Criddle, you do something a little bit like this, if I remember right, through Facebook or Zoom. Sorry. Um, you get some clients together, and they come together once a month. And once a month, you share some great stuff. You teach some great stuff. And imagine that when you teach them that great stuff, they find it so valuable, they're willing to pay for that. Let's just look at some numbers, and, and just to, to build on this. So let's imagine this year, you start to do what I did back in 2014. You get six business owners together, and you teach them something once a month. And let's say you decide to charge them a, to be part of your online business club, $197. Do you realize, if you do the math, that's $14,184 a year in your first year. And all you're really doing is going online once a month for an hour, two hours, and teaching some stuff. What if in year two, you've got another six people, you can build a group of 12 people together. And let's say you keep the price the same. That's $28,000. Go straight to your bottom line because it doesn't take a lot of time to do that. What if you go to 20 people? 20 people at $197, that could be $47,000 a year. Now, I have no idea what's possible for you. I have no idea. And so in the workbook, you might want to think about this yourself. But just to give you some context, for me, it's over a million dollars. This has been my model for the last seven years, building this model up. I've spent seven years, this is my business, and I've studied how to, how to create content, how to deliver it, how to, the selling process, the marketing process. I've spent the last, uh, the last years since 2014 mastering this process, and it kind of occurred to me that you can do exactly this in your firms. Because it's not that difficult. We've got, you've got to master this online communication anyway, you've got to master level one. Level one you've got to do because that's the world we're in. If you're going to be good at level one, why not do level two and start doing some videos? If you're going to be good at level one and two, why not go to level three and start to then help people and work one to many and get your message out to more than one person at a time? And if you're going to do level three, why don't you tap into the commercial opportunity, a new opportunity, which you can run alongside what you currently, you still do the one-to-one -one stuff, but you can do this as well. Some of you may know that one of my most successful students, I've been tr working with him since 2015, is Reza Huda. I actually did this training for a bunch of accountants back in 2015, and what I realized was that I taught them video marketing, we did some sessions together, I asked them to do a video and send it to me. And most of them didn't do the, the homework. Uh, a few did. One person who did was Reza. He sent me his video. It was his first ever video. And I looked at it and thought, he's got potential. Now, Reza is somebody who's bought all of my training. Done. I've worked with him since 2015. And you may have seen him. He's doing amazing videos now. And he's also doing this model. He's been doing it for his clients, but also he now helps other accountants. So you probably know of Reza. This is a huge opportunity for you. And what I want to do is, as part of the Online Live Academy, I want to coach you and help you. Whether it's just because you want to be more confident at level one, or whether you want to work through the levels and get to the stage where you could do this as well. You could run a business club for your clients. Whether it's six, 12, 20, who knows where it might well go. I, I'm going to teach you everything and give you um, the behind the scenes, I can share with you the behind the scenes of exactly what I do, my setup, my model, what I do, I will teach you everything to help you become, to tap into this opportunity we now have in this new world that we're in so that you can stand out, be more confident and start to tap into the opportunities of other ways of building a, a, a model of generating revenue and scaling your accounting firm. Okay, uh, if, uh, remember, uh, the link, I think, I'm hoping the link's in the, has been posted for you somewhere. Uh, I'm going to double check, but if not, Sarah might want to post that one more time. Um, I think it's there, actually. Uh, if you can't find it, let me know. I'm going to answer questions now, and so um, I'm happy to uh, spend as long as it takes to answer questions. Um, so, 
Now, there's so much stuff going on in the chat box, in the comments box, that I may have missed questions. I apologize. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to answer any questions I see. It might help, by the way, if you put a big Q, not a, well, not a big one, a capital Q in front. If you've got a question, put a Q in front of the question. It'll just stand out. I'll, I'll see it. And uh, I, I will then answer your question. I can see Lisa says signed up. So thank you, Lisa, for that. Um, Lisa also says Reza's videos are getting better every day. Um, I think he had a good. I think he had a good tutor. I think I'd like to think that. Uh, okay, questions, questions. Uh, please, um, Sarah, you might want to shout out if there were any questions. Kay says I really want to do this, and Kay, you can do this. Um, and as you said, yeah, absolutely, you've got this. Uh, oh, John, John Johnson is here. Hi there, John. John's also been with me since 2014. Uh, and said, still get great value from your course and material. Thanks, Mark and the team. Questions coming, I've just seen from Nancy. Uh, so Nancy says, any audio equipment you recommend? Okay, uh, it's a big question because there, um, there are so many, so m and technology is moving on all the time. What I would recommend is, what I use for many, many years, and it depends on your budget, Nancy, and, and so on, but get a, U a USB microphone. Most of them are pretty good now. For a few years, I used something called the Blue Snowball. Blue is the make, a Blue Snowball. That's uh, fairly inexpensive, but good quality. Uh, I, then up I then upgraded to the Blue Yeti, which is a bit more expensive, but very good quality uh, camera, uh, sorry, camera, uh, microphone. Uh, that's a great microphone as well. Um, but a bit more expensive. But really, it also depends on, and this is why I can't, I can't, I cannot say use this or this because it depends on other things. So, I have quite a bit of echo still. Now, I actually have sound blankets and panels and all sorts of things here to reduce the echo. Uh, but what I've found is that with a, I have a Blue Yeti, very high quality microphone. But because of the type of microphone it is, it does create a bit of echo. Whereas with a Thai mic, I find that there is a, th this is a much, much better quality. There are different types of microphones, uh, um, Nancy, different types of microphones. And what I would do first is, I would listen to how much echo you might have in your room. I don't know where you are, where you record. If you've got, if your audio sounds okay, and if you've got carpets, for example, and curtains and furniture, then I think a Blue Snowball would be a really good way, way, place to start because that's relatively inexpensive. Um, but there are many others. And I, I uh, so Nan so says, figure, not, not a huge budget. So I, I would recommend start perhaps with that one. It's a, great, it's a great microphone, but there are many others. What I will do is as we work together in the academy every time, we will look at some of these topics in much more detail. I'll have some resources. In those resources, I'll list different alternatives for different budgets. But hopefully, I guess you started with that Okay, let's move on to next question. I can see Judy's asked a question. Hi, Judy. Could you please assist us with developing online courses? Uh, that, one of the reasons why, so we've opened up the Academy today, uh, and I opened it because people in the Value Pricing Academy, been, I, I know that they're ready for this. And the reason why we have, the reason why we have a special founder member arrangement is because when you join me today in the Academy as a founder, the direction we go in, the content we create, will be based on what you want. So when you ask me, when you tell me what you want help with, I will help you. So you want help with creating online courses. Can you please assist us with developing online? Absolutely. I will happily do that. I will not now because that's a long conversation. But in the Facebook group, Judy, ask me the questions and I will answer the questions. And if a lot of people want to do online courses, I will then teach you how to do it, the technology you can use, how to create content and so on. Jim, hi there, Jim Rayner. Um, can we run webinars on Zoom meetings or do I need Zoom video webinar? It's slightly more expensive and I've signed up, of course. Uh, Jim, oh, thank you, Jim. Um, it'd be great to work with you again. I would recommend that you start with Zoom meeting because Zoom meeting is relatively inexpensive. Zoom webinar is a, I think it's a bigger increase in price. Zoom webinar is expensive. Zoom webinar is one of the most expensive webinar platforms. Uh, and you don't have to go there. You do not need to spend that money. One of the things that you'll find is you can, there's a lot of technology out there that's very inexpensive. You do not need a huge budget to get started. Okay, you do not need a huge budget to get started. And one of the things I'll teach you is where, what to use, uh, 
uh, what, where to get started, and then if you've got a bigger budget, what's the next things that you could do? Uh, we've used Zoom webinar. We're about to change because we, we think there's some, there's some things about Zoom webinar we don't like. There's other alternatives. So Zoom meeting is great. Zoom meeting is a great place to start, Jim. Um, so do that. David, um, no, that's a comment. It wasn't a question. Uh, Lisa says, QQ, one thing I always have a problem with let me just move this over here so I can see it better. Uh, one thing I always have a problem with when having an online meeting, I need to see the customer on the screen. But that means I'm not looking in the camera. How do you deal with that? Lisa, that's a great question. Um, yeah, you, when you are having an online meeting, you want to engage with the person, which means you want to look at them. And the problem with having, for example, this is one of the reasons I said earlier, I said, you want to have an external webcam, partly because the, the quality is better than the one that's on your laptop. But the other problem is, and this is a more important one, is that let's say you've got it. So you've got a Zoom call. I'm going to use Zoom as the example because I think that's what you mentioned. Uh, no, you didn't. But if, you, if it's Zoom, customers got their webcam on. Your webcam's here, but on your computer screen over here, you've got the webcams and you've got the customer over there. And what happens is your eye is naturally drawn to look at either you or the customer. And when you look at your client, when you're looking at your client on your screen, you're not looking at them. Does that make sense? So what we have to do is we have to train ourselves to look in the right place. And one of the ways to make that really easy is we place, we have an external webcam or camera we put it on a tripod, and you can get some fairly inexpensive ones, and you put the webcam purposely in front of the screen. So I can see me right now. I actually have multiple monitors. I've chosen to put me there, behind the screen. Why? Because my eye's drawn to me. I want to, because I can see me presenting, my eye's drawn to me, and that means that, because I'm hidden by the webcam, the camera, I'm looking at you. Does that help? I hope it makes sense. Lisa, that's, uh, so I'm looking away now to read the comments, but that's how you, that's one of the tricks that you do. You, you, if you're talking to a client, you put the client's webcam behind your webcam. Um, okay, next one I see is Shalita says, any lighting equipment you recommend? Uh, again, a bit like the audio question from Nancy. I don't want to go through too much detail now because there are, there are so many different uh, lighting solutions, and it all depends on your budget. So one of the things that we'll do, and probably in session number one, which I think is a week on Friday, in, in session number one, I will look at equipment and I'll have some resources for you where I'll give you different, different sets of resources for different budgets. But essentially, with lighting, you want to get a studio light. Now, I did, I've got several studio lights, and you do not need to go to the, the level I'm at. So I, I have a big backlight, which is light in the background. I have a, a light that's, uh, that's making me stand out. I have a, what's called a key light, and then I have another light over here. So I have four lights. You do not need to go there, okay? You just want to get, get in the game and get started. You, you can do with just one light. And what I did for, for a long time is I would have a, a stu one studio light that I would put just behind my camera. I wouldn't have all the other ones, just one that gave me a nice light on my face. And there's some great lights out there. Uh, if, if you don't wear glasses, then there's some LED ring lights, which are often used in the beauty industry as well. Ring lights are really good, give a nice soft light. But don't buy a ring light if you wear glasses, because when you have a, and I've got a ring light and I found it, I learned from my mistake. The rings appear in your glasses, okay? So if you wear glasses, don't get a ring light. If you don't wear glasses, then ring lights are fairly inexpensive. It's just a, it's just a ring, and it, you sit it on a tripod stand, that would be, and you put it just behind your webcam, you, you, and that would be great. But there are something else, what, what I quite like is, uh, and again, they're not that expensive, is these LED lights up here aren't that expensive. You could get one of these, and that will do to get you started. The nice thing about the LEDs is there's a, there's two button, usually two buttons on the back. You can change the brightness of the light and also the color cast from a, from a, a more daylight to a more um, a, cool, a cooler color cast. 
So those are quite quite good as well and not that expensive. Okay, let me uh, move on to the next question. That was uh, Lisa. Oh, was that Lisa? No, it wasn't. That was um, that was Shalita. Uh, Rafael from Portugal, just down the road in Lisbon. Rafael, whereabouts in Lisbon are you? Let me know in the comments box. Uh, I might not have heard of it, but uh, once lockdown's finished, we want to go back to Lisbon. So Rafael says, the course must be in English. Well, yes, unfortunately, um, my Portuguese isn't that good just yet. Um, Falo um pouco de português. Okay, um, so yes, it's in English. Uh, Rafael says, can I record video in Portuguese as my clients are Portuguese? You can record your videos in whatever language you want, absolutely, yes. As long as you can understand my teaching, then you can learn that and, and then just do your teaching in Portuguese. Uh, Pareto says, uh, Pareto FD, Pareto, I've got a blue snowball, it's excellent. It is. Blue snowball is a great place to get started. David says, David Pankovic says, can you share how we can use Kajabi to set up a business academy for business owners? Uh, yes, not now. Um, but yes, David, I'll happily, I'll happily do that. We use Kajabi. Kajabi, if you want to do online courses, if that's where you fancy going at some point, Kajabi is a great tool for doing that. It's designed really for, for building courses. It's really easy to build courses and use Kajabi. Uh, it's not the cheapest of tools, but it's a high quality one. Uh, absolutely, David, uh, and you're in the VPA anyway, I will happily teach you that. Janine Hamilton says, uh, how do you feel about Apple AirPod, uh, AirPods Pro used with an iPhone for sound video? Uh, okay, uh, the I don't know which iPhone you've got, but but uh, this is, by the way, this is an iPhone, and and the and this is the iPhone 12. iPhones have amazing cameras, video quality. So, if you want to get into video, you don't need an ex and, you, and you have an, a, an, a, an Apple phone. That's probably sufficient to get started with video, or sufficient to start with your first Facebook Live. I think Apple products are great. Also, the onboard microphone is actually pretty good. So if you, if where my camera is right now, you could mount your, you could mount your iPhone there, and you could probably get away with the onboard. If it's if it's relatively close to you, you could probably get away with the onboard microphone. Um, I don't know what you mean by how do you feel about Apple AirPods Pro? I guess that's because the AirPods actually you can use as the microphone as well. I've never tried that, but I think they would probably work as well if you want to use the AirPods as the microphone. But certainly. The onboard microphone's not too bad with Apple. Give that a try, Janine. You'll get a pretty good quality. Unless, of course, you've got echo in your room. That's a different issue anyway. Okay, that was Janine. Kay Westmoreland. Hi, Kay. Will you include what possible content we could cover? This is what's holding me back. Yeah, absolutely. I know content is a big struggle. What, what do I teach people? And, and here's the interesting thing. Some of you will know this. Uh, in the Value Pricing Academy a few months back, we did a session on Marketing Monday on, uh, on content marketing. We we're talking about the importance of content. And of course, video is your video, your live streaming, whatever it happens to be, is will be part of your content marketing strategy. And someone put in the chat box, yeah, but Mark, I'm just a bookkeeper. I, how can I do videos or content around bookkeeping? Well, don't say I'm just a bookkeeper because bookkeepers do some incredible things. You deliver so much value. So what we did in that, uh, in that live session, we spent less than five minutes as a group in the academy brainstorming what could be a possible topic you could teach around bookkeeping. And as a group, we came up with, I think it was about 40 different topics. That's 40 videos you could do on bookkeeping. And if you're into things like biz advisory or teaching people pricing, I know some people are doing, uh, have been on my price consulting course, or if you're teaching you know, th those sorts of things, you've got endless topics. Content's actually really easy, but what I'll do is I'll teach you the process for how you come up with content. I'll happen, I know we'll cut, I'll, Kay will definitely cover that because that will be a common question. How do you come up with content? I'll give you the strategies. In fact, here's a, a, just a little aside, a little aside. So I started this business in June of 2014. Started with six people. And it's my first online mentoring group. It wasn't actually pricing that very first one. That very first one I did was market, really aimed at marketing for, for, for new startup accounting firms. It was marketing. 
And the reason I chose marketing is even though I'd written a book on, I'd, I'd written my first book, one of these, I'd written this book in, it was published in 2011, so I'd written this five years earlier on pricing. I had these doubts, I thought, I don't know, if I did a monthly training every single month, I don't know if I know enough about pricing to keep going. So I'll start with marketing, because marketing's an endless topic. There's so many things about marketing. And I love marketing because it's something I'm obsessed with for growing my own business. So my very first online group was a marketing one because I felt I didn't know enough about pricing to keep the conversation going. Interestingly, Kay, uh, when you joined in, a, in August, I decided to do a pricing one. Now, when I started that in August, Kay, little secret, and John, um, when I started that in August, I didn't know how long, I could go how long I could go before I ran out of steam. And as you know, uh, I'm now, what, seven, uh, six, seven, oh, my maths is gone, seven years later, I still have endless topics. I have about, I have a 40 different 90-minute sessions just on pricing. Because what you'll find, this is what you'll find, this is what you'll find is, particularly if you're doing things like a business, that level four, that level four, um, what you'll find is that the more you start creating content, the more your brain comes attuned to listening to your customers as to what they want. And they'll tell you what they want. They'll tell you the content they want. You'll never run out. Wow, David Dell's here. Hi, David. I've not seen you for a long time. Uh, David, I hope you're well. Um, okay, where was I? Kay Westmoreland. That's Kay's. Uh, okay, uh, someone said I got massive echo for my blue snowball. Uh, had to buy a screen to absorb echo, which works, but took up a lot of space on my desk. End up changing to a different mic. Okay, it's not the fault of the blue snowball, the echo. And, and so you can get different mics that certainly help with echo, but there are other things that if you're getting echo that you might want to think about. Uh, and, and again, we can talk about those things uh, in the academy if you're having problems with echo, because I've had to deal with that. Okay, Nadim Raja. Hi, Nadim. Good to see you. Nadim says, how did you share the screen seamlessly today? I you in a box and screen share. What software did you use? Okay, Nadim, I have uh, a lot of stuff going on here because I'm, obs I'm kind of obsessed with this and I'm learning or, or all the technology is changing all the time. Uh, I will happily teach you all this stuff as part of the academy. And Nadim, I know you're in the academy anyway. I will teach you all this. Uh, I, it's, again, it's not a quick answer because I'm using lots of stuff right now to, to get the results that I'm using. I'm using lots of software. So the main key piece of software I'm using is called Ecamm Live. Now Ecamm Live is only available for Mac. So if you're a PC user, you can't use that. There are PC equivalents. There are, but there are so many different things that you could use Nadim to get the same effect. And it really depends on a number of things. For example, if you want to, if your goal is you want to start live streaming, say Facebook Lives, then there are tools like StreamYard, Restream, that make that so easy to do. Uh, but the, it really depends on what different what different things do you want to create? Do you, do you want to go live? Is it webinars? Uh, and also, are you on a Mac or are you on a PC? And I don't want to go down that rabbit hole just yet, but I have very strong views as to which one you should go down. Uh, and uh, and so I, what, I'll, what I will do, Nadim, is, is I will be over time, sh I will share everything that I'm using. Uh, and I'll share alternatives if you're not a Mac user. But yeah, I'm using some various different technologies. So, uh, I, and, and I have, for example, um, and there are lots of different technologies you can use to get similar results. So, for example, I use something called an A10 Mini, which is a switcher, which means I can switch to different cameras or I can switch to different computers and have... I can, I can run, because this is a live stream, I'm doing it live, I want to make sure that my computer isn't distracted by running other pieces of software. So I have some things, if I'm doing a, on a Friday, for example, if you come to my effective pricing sessions and I flick to effective pricing, I run that on a separate computer just so that I don't overload the power, so just so I can have enough power for the live streaming. And then I can switch backwards and forwards with a switch. There are other ways of doing exactly that same thing without buying an A10 Mini. So I can do a similar thing with something called a Stream Deck and I can switch between different camera angles. And then once you've done that and using things like 
Ecamm or StreamYard. There's various technology you can use that will enable you to create things like what you can see going on here. Uh, so I, I will. It, it's it you. It's, it's, if you want to go there, you can go there, but you do not need to. Okay. What I want you to do is go back to those, that scoring system. I talk about production. I'm probably getting close to a 10 out of 10 production. You do not need to be 10 out of 10 production. Wherever you are right now, just to have a goal to get one or two more points further along the process. Gradually just build things up. Um, okay. So Nadim, I hope that helps with that. Uh, what else have we got? Nancy says, how do you stop the glare reflection in glasses? Yeah, that's a great question. And it's the, the glare, is, that's always a problem with glasses. So one option is take them off and, and put contacts in. That's the easiest solution, but I don't like contacts. So it's about positioning the lights carefully. And it, 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 it'll help if you've got somebody else to help you out with this. You've got, you have a light and then just, just sometimes it's the smallest of movements of the light can be sufficient. It's trial and error. And then once you've done it, I would suggest don't move the light. Keep that light in that position. I have found over the last few years, I don't have too much of a problem with glare in the glasses unless I use a ring light. I don't know what it is about ring lights, but they just make this circle in. It just catches your glasses and you just can't get rid of it. However you, however you move the ring light, it doesn't seem to, seem to solve the problem. Okay, next question uh, that I've got. Um, There's a few comments as well from other people about uh, reflection in glasses and so on. Uh, it is annoying. It's one of those things, but uh, you, with, you, you can get around it. Um, uh, I wear glasses, so I put a blank piece of paper over my ring light. It acts as a diffuser. Yeah, so a diffuser is a, is a great thing to do. I can't show you one of mine just yet. Cause I've got a couple of my, my cameras here have got diffusers. One of them's just a piece of, what do you call it? It's like grease paper. Not sure it's grease paper, but it's um, it just diffuses things enough to, to get rid of some of the glare. Uh, oh, uh, oh, Irish. Okay, if I pronounce that right, Raphael. Um, that's where he lives. I remember, I know that. Cloudbooks CPA says, will the video training be included in the next session of the VPA? Uh, so yes, if you're in the VPA, you'll get automatic access to everything as well. What Sarah's going to do in the next day or so, she will automatically, if you're in the VPA, get you access. So don't worry about any of that. Okay, we have um, Kay says, thank you, so excited. This is where I want to take my business. Okay, I'm excited for you. Uh, Raphael says, Mark, what do you use to avoid echo when recording video? Okay, so very quickly, again, I'll, uh, I'll spend more time on, on this if it's an issue for people. Uh, so. First thing I did, simple things that you can do is if you're in a place like Portugal and you've got a hard surface is put down some rugs. OK, if you've got carpets like in the UK, then that's easy. But you want to have rugs and the more thick pile, the better. So I just have under here. And if I don't know if, if you're joining me, Raphael, what I'll do in future sessions is using my uh, iPhone. I can then move. I can show I will show you stuff. But I have a couple of big rugs under here. That helps. Uh, another thing I have is two big sign, sound blankets. So uh, you, this, uh, yeah, this here is a sound blanket, uh, and I've got this hanging up. I've actually got it hanging from the ceiling, but you can create using some special stands. You can create sound blankets. They absorb sound as well. I also have, and I can't show you right now, but sometime I can show you. I have some sound boards in various places as well, and uh, I'm hoping you don't hear any echo. I, I, I think it's pretty good my audio now, but it was a problem when I first came to, to Portugal. Okay, uh, we have, Judy says, when will price consulting come around again? Oh, a few people are asking me that and, I've, and I haven't got back to them yet. So I'm getting an increased number of people asking about price consulting. It's a training program, it's my highest level training program uh, where I teach how to run a consulting business, teaching your clients how to price, which actually which would fit in perfectly with level four of this. I used to run it in calendar years. So the last time I ran it was Price Consulting 2020. Uh, we had we decided to have a pause in 2021. And so we are debating whether to bring it back next year. If we do, it may well be back end of this year. 
but it might be I try to do something because I have so many people in the academy want access to, to it, I try and do something sooner. So watch this space, Judy. Um, price consulting will probably come, will come around at some point. Betty Watson, I'm all signed up now. Such a great price. It's actually, I must admit, I said to Sarah earlier, as I, once I prepared the content, we've gone in too low with the price. But that's, not, that's my problem, not your problem. So yes, we will be putting it up. Uh, 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 so Sybil says, is the built-in camera in the new MacBook Air with the M1 chip good enough? Looks like you used a curved external monitor. Is that connected to a MacBook? Um, okay, so an, uh, what I so the the MacBook, the new MacBook Air with the M1 chip. So if you're not a Mac user, you'll have no idea what I'm talking about. But for the last eleven years, Apple have been developing their own internal chips. In the past, they've used third-party chips like Intel. And after 11 years of research in back end of last year, they introduced the M1 chip. And at the moment, the M1 chip is in the MacBook Air, the Mac Mini, and I think it's in the MacBook Pro. Basically, the M1 chip is extraordinarily good, extraordinarily good. And people doing live streaming are, are swearing by it. So I went out and bought just a few weeks ago. I'm running this with an M1 chip. And, and actually, the interesting thing is I haven't got the MacBook Air, Sybil. I have the Mac Mini M1, and it's an extraordinary piece of kit for the price. Uh, and, and we'll go into this in the Academy at a later date, because I know I might upset people, but I, I, I think that if you want to go to level four, Apple, you want to go down the route of Apple rather than um, PC, because the quality is just so much better. And now they brought out the Mac Mini with the M1 chip. Budget can't be an excuse because that's an incredible piece of kit for a ridiculously low price. Um, but you've got the MacBook Air with the M1 chip. That is good as well. So, uh, but, uh, but the question you asked is, is the built-in camera uh, good enough? I don't know because I've not tried it. Try it, Sybil. I think you will find that the built-in camera is good enough as an entry level. It's good enough. But I would recommend plugging in, ex plugging in an external webcam, not just because you want to improve the quality, but also for the reasons I explained earlier, that you can put the webcam in front of the screen or somewhere where you can train your eye to look at the audience. Okay, next question. Um, uh, and I think we're about done anyway, because uh, we've been going for a couple of hours. Um, uh, that, I think that was the last question, Sybil. I think you were the last question. So unless something comes in in a couple of seconds, I think we're probably uh, about done. So thank you so much for coming along. Uh, I, I, I hope you've made notes, but most importantly, I hope you're going to do something with this. Take some action, do something, because uh, I think this is an exciting opportunity for, for you to, 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 to become more confident, to stand out, be different, uh, and, and tap into some other ways of adding value to your clients and getting your message out there. Okay, Donna says, thank you for the information. Uh, I'm not sure what Nadi means by no sound, but hopefully um, you've caught that. Right, I will see you all online soon. My next session is tomorrow, by the way, if you're interested in like, finding out more about effective pricing. David Colts is the hero of tomorrow, and uh, he's going to be talking about how he uses the software to do his engagement letters and use keywords. So I may see you this time tomorrow. Bye for now. Take care.